What about Africa? Um, a country. Yeah, um, on the other side of the world. Yeah, yeah, like that. Um, lightning. World Cup. Um, you too? Jungle. Uh, huts. Jungle huts, yeah. <laughs> Not quite. What about the people? Wait, wait, before you answer that question. You've all seen it before. Images of poverty, sadness, children without love. Images of groups of people with indistinguishable faces, no interests, and no personalities. People who are helpless. This isn't real. The reality is, these people are smart, funny, organized, sarcastic, ambitious. They're late to things, they dance, often much better than we do. They have crushes. It is not the choices they make, their attitudes, the dedication of families, of communities, and it is definitely not who they are. The deciding factor for so many is the lack of opportunity. A lack of opportunity means that they do not have the tools or power to bring themselves out of poverty. They are being held down by factors beyond their control. So, how can we help? EWB stands out among development organizations by pursuing innovative and creative approaches to reducing poverty. We don't believe in handouts. We believe in enabling local communities to reach their own goals and potential. Take, for example, our Agriculture as a Business program in Ghana. In the next five years, my vision is that farmers in Ghana will be able to move from a life of subsistence to one of prosperity. These are farmers like Takara and Aramata who live in northern Ghana. They have children. They're trying to build a better life for those children with more opportunity, better education. But the problem is that many of these farmers lack the resources and they lack the business skills to get ahead. These challenges facing farmers are substantial, and so it requires us to have an innovative approach, to take really great ideas, and to be able to figure out how to scale them up over time to have the impact that we want to see. We're taking the knowledge and the insights that we're gaining from the field, and we're packaging them in a way that policymakers are able to see is relevant. We're also partnered with the largest agricultural organization in Ghana to develop an innovative program that addresses the root causes of the challenges we see. That program is called Agriculture as a Business, and it's working. Over 2,000 farmers in the northern region of Ghana are taking advantage of this program, and the results are promising. The Asangtaba Farmer Group is a great example of this. Over the past year, they've increased their profits, they've opened up a bank account, and they're investing for the future of their farms. This is a group that will farm after the rains fail. This is a group that will be able to reach profitable markets. And this is a group that will succeed. We're committed to scaling up this program in Northern Ghana because we know agriculture as a business is an idea that works. That's just one of EWB's main programs in Africa. Our other areas of focus include access to safe water and sanitation in Malawi, agricultural programs in Burkina Faso and Zambia, and improving rural government systems in Ghana. But the work doesn't stop there. EWB's work across Canada, and right here on campus, plays a huge role in driving change. In today's interconnected world, sustainable development requires change at home. EWB engages Canadians to ensure that their individual actions, and those of our corporations, have a positive impact on human development. I think it's about the informed decisions we make when we talk about fair trade and realizing where our coffee comes from, where do our fruits and vegetables come from, knowing how that can affect other people. African governments often cooperate with the Canadian government and the Canadian government can give them the tools or finances they need to meet the needs of their population. Um, so for example, if an African government is paying a lot of debt to Canada or other Western countries, we could relieve that debt and give them much more money. And one of my co-workers came up with a, the headline on the newspaper was Canada relieves get all of Ghana's debt. Uh, you know, and I immediately thought of all of my friends in Canada who were out campaigning 
and you know speaking in public and doing whatever they could. Okay, Paul Martin. Last time I talked to you, we had 300 people. Now we have 20,000. You didn't get the message last time. I hope you got it this time because we're going to make poverty history. For example, I was recently um, in Mali when the G8 relieved the debt. And Mali was given 2.5 billion extra dollars that they didn't have to pay back. So that's money that they could use to improve their education, their healthcare systems. It's easy to think when, when you're on this side of the pond in, in Canada that you, you can't have an impact, but very little actions here have a huge ripple effect for people living on the other side of the world. EWB's chapters bring together students and young professionals who are passionate about international development. My name is Demma Schultz and I'm the president and journal of the University of Guelph chapter of Adventures of Course. And I'm involved with York University's chapter of EWB. I'm VP Education at the University of Western Ontario chapter of EWB. Through EWB's leadership training, member education and public outreach programs, chapter members across the country encourage Canadians to care about and take action on international development issues from their own communities. At Guelph we do a lot of public outreach activities, so we go into the malls in Guelph and we talk to the general public about uh, issues facing people in developing countries. We also do similar things on campus in high traffic areas. Uh, we have a discussion group leader who runs weekly discussion sessions. We send two volunteers every year overseas. We got to a lot of classrooms, got to a lot of kids. Really amazing. EWB chapters do lots of fun fundraising activities. Back in Saskatchewan, we would have barbecues, frisbee tournaments. Um, other chapters have done things like beating the crap out of poverty. C'est pas seulement une personne, c'est pas seulement un gouvernement, mais c'est l'ensemble de tout le monde. C'est ça qui va amener la, la, le développement. My name is Anna Diana from the University of Manitoba EWB chapter. My name is Chad Hammer, and I'm from Saskatchewan. I'm now working at the National Office. My name is Kaheba and I'm from Vancouver. Probably the biggest thing that EWB does is it opens windows. And when I first read its mission statement, I literally got chills down my spine and I said, this is what I need to do. I got involved with EWB because I knew that there was, there was a more human side to engineering. And probably one of the most important things as well is um, the people that I've met. And I've just met the most incredible, energetic, passionate people who just sort of get it. Uh, you get to be a little bit ridiculous and totally creative. So I picture myself sitting in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in a pretty protected or pretty comfortable bubble. Absolutely, EWB's changed my life. EWB has burst my bubble. It influences your life in the smallest of ways and in the biggest of ways. Engineers Without Borders can help you translate your compassion and talent into lasting change for people living in poverty. You can help EWB drive extraordinary change.